Hello everyone, uh, I'm Ian Abernethy and in this video I thought we'd talk a little bit about uh, discipline. So it's one of those things that's often sold as a selling point, you know, for martial arts that it can increase your discipline. And there's no doubt that, you know, doing things that are challenging requires us to be disciplined if we're going to make progress. But at least two types of discipline, uh, one of which can be potentially problematic. And I often think within the martial arts world, the, the distinction between the two is maybe not as clear as it needs to be. So we've got self-discipline and imposed discipline. So I think what we want to be developing for students is self-discipline. You know, that, that ability to motivate themselves, to push them things, uh, themselves through discomfort, uh, to keep working at these challenging things that martial arts, you know, by the very definition, demand. It's that kind of discipline we want to be encouraging. Now, this often gets confused with imposed discipline. So within the karate training, for example, you know, we'll talk about, you know, having a disciplined atmosphere. But what we really want to do with that is encourage self-discipline among the students. What we don't want to be doing is having the instructor imposing the discipline. Now, this is problematic, particularly from a self-defense point of view, because one key part of, of, of proper self-defense, proper self-protection, is that people get very good at setting boundaries. You know, that they, they will not uh, permit certain styles of behaviour. They will not uh, uh, permit their own uh, boundaries, what they're comfortable with, um, and to be eroded or trespassed upon. Well, if we have a, an environment in the dojo where you do whatever the big scary guy at the front of the class is barking at you and you're expected to obey every single command given to you, this imposed discipline, that's problematic. Because we're effectively encouraging the students to allow those barriers to be eroded. Now, there's a difference here, of course. You know, a good instructor will, will encourage students and will push students um, to develop their own self-discipline. Uh, and, but that shouldn't be confused with this imposed discipline. You can tell the difference by how it makes you feel as well. So if I look at, you know, I think of my instructors and I've been lucky to have, you know, very good instructors throughout the years. They did push me, but I never had any doubt they were pushing me for my benefit. It was, you know, you think you can't do this, Ian, you can do this. You know, keep going, Ian, push that little bit harder. See, see what we told you. It leaves me feeling good about myself. Uh, this imposed discipline, if it makes you feel small, or uh, 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 not good about yourself, that, that's a good sign that that discipline is, is somebody enforcing their will upon you. So we, we need to be uh, uh, careful of that. It's not a healthy environment to be in. And unfortunately, there are way too many within the martial arts world who run it like that, who run their, their clubs and their dojos. You know, when you step into the room, you will do exactly what I tell you, when I tell you, and that's what I expect. And if you don't do that, I'll make you feel terrible about it. I'll ridicule, I'll humiliate you, I'll criticise you. This is all very, very negative stuff. So while discipline is very, very important, it should be that self-discipline that we're trying to encourage. I would suggest that imposed discipline can be very problematic. It's not healthy. And again, just to make clear, that's, that's still, that's different from the instructor encouraging you, you know, to, to maintain your self-discipline. The two are very different. Now, close related to that is this idea of, of, of respect. Um, so sometimes we'll hear, you know, um, Funakoshi's quote, Tran, you know, karate begins and ends with respect. It, it didn't actually say that. What he said was karate begins and ends with rei. And it's one of these odd Japanese concepts that doesn't really have a strict English equivalent, right? Uh, in terms of language. So, so, but I, I think it's more accurately translated as courtesy. So if I, if I meet somebody, then I'll be, for the first time, I'll be courteous towards them. I'll be polite towards them because that's what we should do, right? But they don't have my respect immediately. Respect is something that's earned over time through consistent actions. You know, so after a little while, you know, I've got students that, you know, I, I really respect the hard work and effort they've put in. And hopefully, you know, they look at me and I really respect the, you know, the effort and time Ian has put into helping me develop. There's that mutual respect, but it's not demanded from day one it shouldn't be there from day one respect is something that you earn over time that grows over time so again this is related to this you know if you walk into a dojo and someone goes you will respect me that is very problematic you know no one should expect that certainly by all means courtesy good manners you know that's yeah of course that should be there 
you respect people, you act with respect and you act with courtesy until such time as it's clear that it shouldn't be there. So again, from that self-defense, self-protection point of view, we're polite until the time comes not to be polite. You know, sometimes, you know, as part of the de-escalation, even depending on the circumstances, you know, you'll draw those very firm lines and make clear to people that, no, you know, I, I am not going to behave politely towards you because I, I need you to realize that your behavior is unacceptable to me and you need to back off. So, you know, from the self-development point of view and, and also the self-protection point of view, we need to be careful um, with these uh, discipline. It's not imposed discipline we want. It's developing self-discipline within the student. The instructor encourages that. that they, they don't kind of impose their will upon them. That's not something that should be happening. And in terms of courtesy, of course, we should treat each other with courtesy, you know, within the, in, in, in the, the, the training hall, within the, the gym, the dojo, whatever you want to call it. But respect, uh, we shouldn't be giving each other respect straight away. You know, respect is something that's earned over time. So I hope this video has maybe gave you something to think about, you know, when it comes to discipline within the dojo. We, we encourage you self-discipline, not imposed discipline. And we encourage courtesy and good manners within the dojo, right? But, but, but again, that's not um, respect. It's something different. Respect is something that's earned over time. So Funakoshi, in his, you know, karate begins and ends with courtesy. I think that's the way we should translate that. It doesn't begin and end with respect. Respect is an earned thing. So I say, I hope this video has given you something to think about. And, and maybe, you know, if you're in a dojo where you feel that you leave it feeling bad about yourself and, and, and people are demanding respect and demanding you do what they do, consider maybe moving to another dojo. We should be encourage people to set their own boundaries. Respect should be something that's earned over time. And, and, and discipline is something that we, we encourage within the students through encouragement. It's not something we force upon each other. 